Hey, it's Drew Bennett from Big Damn Kid, and I have issue number two of the Transformers Headmasters, which was a four-issue miniseries that happened every other month in the end of uh, 1987. What happened? There we go. Uh, and so, we're going to get to the next issue. The robots from Cybertron, the Autobots, have arrived, and it's causing chaos in this peace full planet. They certainly devolved into war quickly. And here we have the people on top of that uh, statue of Nebulus, uh, Nebulos in uh, the middle of Karaja, which is the, which is the capital city. And uh, they're not too happy that the robots are there. So they are having a uh, protest, not quite that peaceful. And, uh, you know, so above the crowd we have Galen and Duros and Zarok, Alira, Krunk, and a couple of other of a couple other people. And they're talking about the, the crowd and what's happening in the crowd below. They're you know, they're having their protests and then the people do have the right to uh, to protest and that's something, you know, it's a very uh, progressive planet and but they're not happy about these robots even though at the end of the last issue five of the robots took off their heads and six of the robots disarmed themselves so they're showing a they're, they're showing that they want peace and the people will not accept that and partially that is to do with Lord Zarak who has incited the crowd as you can see in this part here that uh, you know he's gotten He's paid people to uh, incite riots in the crowd. And you see there's a, people who are fighting, and Galen jumps down to stop the fighting. He tries to, to stop people from, from fighting, and he gets sucker punched. Uh, and Alira is his, or Lyra is his uh, girlfriend, uh, at least uh, here. And she's also the daughter of Zarek. Now, what, remember what I said in the last issue, that last episode, was that the name Galen and the game the name Lyra, those are the names of the parents for Jin Erso in um, Rogue One. So I don't know if they had any influence in this or not, or if it's just a coincidence. I just something I noticed as I was reading it. So Galen, you know, he is, uh, you know, he's decided that he, he has to do something and uh, to stop these people from from rioting any further. And so he, he goes off, and Zarek starts putting lies into Lyra's head. Uh, basically, and she at first now, she, you know, she has great faith in Galen, but her father just picks at it, picks at it, picks at it. He's very manipulative. Uh, there is an, on the outskirts of the town, there is a long-abandoned munitions uh, warehouse, and inside are the bodies of the robots and their weapons, and then their heads. And so Galen comes and he revives the head of Fortress Maximus. And Fortress Maximus tells him, um, you know, peace is our shared purpose, Galen. We must let nothing interfere with its preservation. And he talks about for millions of years on Cybertron, war raged, and he talks all about uh, that, and that's why they left and they came here, but their first interaction was with Gort and an accident happened where it hurt him and then the misunderstanding can you know devolved into violence very quickly and Galen you know thinking of what he needs to do to keep the peace and if he destroyed you know if he destroyed the robots it would make a mockery of what he was trying to accomplish there and so the protests are continuing, and Zarok is again further inciting the Council of Peers with his rhetoric, and his rhetoric is, is pretty strong. Galen then uh, speaks after that, uh, and as he's speaking, you can see Gort up in the, up in the, uh, the gallery there, and Gort, you know, saying that he needs, he wants to speak, and Galen sees him being escorted out by the guards, and he says, you know, bring him here, and they bring Gort up, and Gort tells him, 
tells everyone uh, that he, you know, he's only recently recovered from his injuries in the forest, and he wasn't attacked. He fell, and it resulted from an accident, and that puts the end to that in the in the council. Um, you know, there there have he basically says that you know the the robots did not incite anything, and they did not cause any um, aggression. And, and then what about the rest of the aggression after that? And said, well, so, you know, we may have incited that to happen. Uh, and so the peace agreement with the Autobots remains intact is what, is what um, Galen says. So the Autobots now have their freedom to build the city uh, in the forest. So a bunch of the other Autobots that aren't headless are out there and they're working. And... Galen and a group come from, you know, they come from the uh, the city and they want to see what's happening there. Um, and so Blur shows them around, uh, shows them everything that's going on there. Uh, and while they're there, Hot Rod is, he's trying to set up communications back with their old base just so that they can listen in. They want to see what's happening. It's just going to be a receiving station. But when they're there... This guy, Vorath, he does something. He locks in on the frequency, and we'll see why later. And so, you know, it's all good. And they must use the symbol for OK there in Nebulous. OK. So, as they're doing this, uh, Hot Rod's trying to communicate with, with uh, Cybertron, or at least, at least listen in. And later on, they the Vorath and Zarak and Krunk are... Uh, attempting to contact that old base. And so Zor um, Zarak, he sends out a message that, you know, there's these Autobots here and we need someone to come and, and get rid of them. Uh, so he sends that message all the way across to Cybertron. So, you know, he's basically saying that, um, you know, he wants somebody, a message to come through and say that duh, 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 duh. Cybertron, this is Lord Zarak of Nebulus. Your help of ridding uh, in ridding us of this marauding band of your people led by Fortress Maximus. Well, just so happens that timing is great in comic books. Uh, the Decepticons have infiltrated the base that has abandoned, and they notice this sound coming through there, but they don't recognize it. They realize it's another language. It's Nebulese. Uh, Nebulanese, and so they program Nebulanese into their um, into their um, language. So they now uh, know where the Autobots are, and they're going to chase them across the galaxy. And so they decide they're going to fly in, chase them across the galaxy, and uh, they, let's see, several days later, the Cybertronian spacecraft arrives on Nebulus and it releases its cargo. And there are all of the Decepticons that arrive. And, you know, they're there for Lord Zarek. Now, the weird thing is, Lord Zarek, he wants to, the Autobots to get, you know, gone so that he can keep the peace. But he keeps doing these things that are you know, really underhanded. I, he, I don't think he understands what peace is in the first place. But, okay. Uh, so, the Decepticons go to Karaja, uh, and when they get to Karaja, uh, they say, Creatures of Karaja, surrender Fortress Maximus and all other Autobots in your care, or suffer total annihilation by my hands, by the Prime Matrix itself, so swears Scorponok. And so, you know, you've got this is quite a different group of robots that are arriving at Karaja than there were when the Autobots came. You know, we've got uh, Blot, Slug Slinger, Mind Wipe, Scorponok, Skull Cruncher, Snapdragon, and Cyclonus. And all of those transform and they start to attack the city because they want the Autobots. Galen runs out to that warehouse and he gets in the warehouse. He's got a few people there with him. Uh, there is Duros, and there's Gort, and, let's see, Arcana, and, uh, so they revive Fortress Maximus, and, you know, if they put the heads back on the Autobots, then it's going to break the peace with the Autobots, and Galen won't, won't do that, um, so, uh, 
so what they determine as the Decepticons are moving in, moving on the city, that they're going to try some remote control work to remote control the Autobots without their heads, and all they do is just bang into each other. It's not going to work. That's that's a, that's not going to work. So Arcana, he's a doctor of bioengineering in uh, Nebulos. He arrives and he he says we're going to create a Nebulan Autobot hybrid, and he's looking for five volunteers: Gort, Doros. Uh, this guy comes in, his name is Styler. And see Styler right there? Okay, he got black hair. Gort up here has blonde hair. You'll see in other issues why that is a makes a difference. Uh, so Galen decides that he is going to be the last uh, the last person. Um, and Lyra runs in and she does not want him to, to do that at all. Um, <clears throat> because you know, she does, she, he's a man of peace, and, and this is making war. So what they do is they have these surgeries that happen simultaneously and very quickly and convert the, uh, well, they bioengineer the Nebulans to um, robots. So they're part Nebulan, part robot. Their bodies are completely changed forever. And what they now do is they can, can they can um, transform into the heads of the Autobots. So that one is, um, let's see, uh, Hardhead. And Hardhead is the one that I have here. And inside Hardhead, and I've been waiting to say this, uh, inside Hardhead, here's the little head. So you got Hardhead and the head there. Okay, that's Hardhead's head. This guy is not named Duros. His name is Furos. I don't know why they lost the name rights to Duros and who actually used Duros, but that is the the head of our uh, in Titans Return. The head of Hardhead is now named Furos. And so the Autobots pick up these new heads and they they attach them now, in later issues, they say that the, the, they've been binary binded to the, uh, to the heads. But in this case, um, it's a radio contact that they make. They, there's control in the body of the Autobots as well as in the, in the people. But in later issues, they have been binary binded to each other. And that's what they, that's what they call it later. So the battle is raging around Karaja. We've got uh, Decepticons flying in from all over the place and attacking. Uh, the people are just getting decimated by these uh, by these Decepticons. And so the gates the gates open, and out step the Autobots, thinking that they are going to be uh, surrendering themselves. But they open fire on the Decepticons. And they are so fierce and so strong that the Decepticons all retreat. Yep, they're very strong because... Uh, well, or they all, sorry, they didn't retreat yet. Um, so they're fighting. They're fighting even better than ever before. The Decepticons are making note of this, that, that the Autobots now are fighting better than they have ever in their... they've ever encountered them. And so they... Uh, Decepticons, they retreat. You know, they, they run off and, and they retreat. Uh, the Autobots have won. And the Nebulans that have helped them have won. And so they turn around and look at what the city looks like. And the people are, you know, already they're skeptical. They're saying, maybe we just uh, traded one group of would-be conquerors for another. Uh, they're so monstrous. And, you know, so they say, you know, we better show them, we better show them something. So they all remove their heads. The heads then transform into the people, and the people then uh, take off their, take off their helmets. And uh, everyone is really excited about that, and they're, they're so proud of their people uh, for chasing off the Decepticons and finding a compromise there. Everyone except Lyra. Lyra is, she can't believe that Galen has done this, and she says, savor your victory, Galen. It's the only one you have won today. Um, you know, and so, 
you know he is he is on his road to losing her, uh, which is which is too bad. Um, but she has been influenced by her father, and she also thinks that Galen has betrayed her people uh, and the peace that he's worked so hard for, uh, which is unfortunate because he's still trying to you know he he need he can be working for peace, but there's going to be no peace if the Decepticons are there and all they want to do is is attack and and hurt the people. So poor Galen. Anyway, this is uh, Drew Bennett from Big Damn Kid. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook as Big Damn Kid. You can find me at BigDamnKid.com where I do a complete write-up of every one of these issues. And uh, you can find me here. I'd love it if you subscribe, leave me a comment, and as always, thanks for watching.